Now I just set that back to none. Well, we definitely want to feather this because there's times where the mask actually cuts right through some of the ink patterns. So like right here. And we need to uh, blur that to, to make it blend a lot better. So we, the, we can't actually just feather this. Uh, well, we can, but it won't look very good because you see when we put this into a new composition and add a white solid behind it, we're getting this terrible fringe here. And one way we can fix that is by duplicating the fractal like our composition and call this one no mask. And we'll delete the mask from this one here. And in this fractal here, I'll call this fractal UV because this will be the one we want the UV. Um, we will grab the normal fractal, which we already have here, sorry. Grab the no, one with no mask and we'll alpha mat and as you can see we've gotten rid of the terrible fringe there and it's actually a little bit even though we had the contrast set to like 5000 the uh, it's still getting a bit of grey here and we want it completely white but we also want to be careful that we don't push it too far because if we do we're getting rid of all this nice detail that we have so I'm just going to increase the white just a little bit maybe to about there all right, that's good. So here we have our final ink pattern. That's probably going to take forever to render. I'll just lower the resolution. And that's the animation. Cool. Now let's get the UV that we have. Put it on top. And I'll set this to exclusion. Still can't see it that well. Um, but if we I'll just set to full quality so we can see it a little better. Um, we can see that the ink pattern is quite a bit too big. So I'll just uh, parent this to the one without a mask. I'll scale this one down. And if we turn that off, we can see that that's the point of his nose there, the geometry. And if we go along a bit, we can see that it's in this pattern. I sort of think that this kind of looks like a nose bit here, two nostrils and, and a mouth. So what I'd like to do is actually line that up to where the nose is in the geometry to kind of create a cool looking uh, mask pattern. Alright, so the scale is about 70%, that looks quite good. We're getting, uh, if we go to, we have lots of ink, we're getting it cut off here. But that's okay because uh, remember the model is model without the hat. Our character is wearing a hat which will cover most of that. So this looks pretty good. So I'll just turn off the UV and I'll export this as an image sequence. And I'll make this one a TIFF sequence. And okay. And remember that. Um, Maya does not like underscores in the TIFF sequences, so change the underscore to a dot. And I'll call this uh, face dot in. Because we're, this is the pattern that's going into the texture. And I'll hit render and uh, we'll let that render and then add it in Maya. Back in Maya, let's go to the hyper shade here. Okay, now let's. Add a Lambert, Lambert 2, and for the color, we'll set it to our file. And I will direct that to the desktop where I <laughs> put the image sequence. And I'll open that up. And because uh, we won't have any lights in our scene, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself, turn the fills off to, from quadratic to off. And because we have no lights in the scene, I will set the ambient color to maximum. and go to the render settings and actually turn off the default light. Okay, so let us uh, attach that to my face here. And that looks good. Let, uh, let's just set it transparent so we can see as we uh, play through just to make sure that the pattern's doing what it's doing or doing what we want it to. Okay, looks like it's in a, in a decent position. I think the UV map's done well. Now we'll go back to the texture and set it to the sequence, use the image sequence. 
So now we'll get the animation. And yep, that looks nice. That's nice. Okay. Just uh, make sure, yep, the hat is definitely covering everything, all the edges that we don't want. Okay, that, that looks good. Let's, uh, we can render that now. So I'll turn that to this. Let's get rid of the image planes alpha. And uh, yeah, we did everything in 1080, but obviously, as I as I said before, the screen is only 720, so you won't actually notice the difference um, from this recording screen is only 720. So I'm going to save a little bit of time, render it in 720p, and to preserve the uh, the smoothing, we can't uh, render it in my software. We have to render it in Mental Ray. Uh, my software doesn't support the smooth. So in quality, I'll set it to production, production fine trace if you're feeling, feeling rich, and I don't need ray tracing, I can turn that off to save a bit of time, I'll set the name to, hmm, we'll call it inkblot, and uh, name number dot extension 7 to 117 I think it is. And PF track camera, good. That looks good. Okay, let's batch render this. Okay, I've imported my footage into After Effects, and I've also got the uh, the input that we just rendered, and I'll put that over the top. And that's looking pretty good. And I'll set it to multiply. And if we preview this, we have our Nice Rorschach effect. Uh, so what we need to do now is clean up the uh, the tracking markers. So to do this, we're going to track them one at a time in uh, Mocha, and uh, and the reason for that is because there's so many, it's easy to just get overwhelmed if we try to do them all at once. So we'll track them one at a time, and uh, I'll just uh, do one. I'll I'll get rid of clean out one of these tracking markers and then I'll show the rest in fast forward because it's quite a time consuming process so uh, let's zoom in here on the one that we're going to get rid of I'll get rid of this one here and let's create an X spline around it I'm going to use four points because I want to create a circle type shape and I'll round the corners off a little bit make it a little bit bigger okay and I want to turn off all of these because that can warp the image a bit. I just want the translation and I want to use at least 90% of the pixels and it's quite a large motion. So let's hit track forwards. Okay, let's export the shape data. And make a shape data for A, copy to clipboard and let's go into After Effects and create a new layer and paste that data. And you'll see that it's uh, it's the exact shape that we uh, had in Mocha, and it's um, it's very good. Okay, let's uh, duplicate the layer for each uh, for each one of these tracking tracking marks that we're going to remove. We're going to have one shape data layer and one uh, footage layer, and we're going to alpha mat that layer here. So uh, then we're, what we're going to do is we're just going to take some information from either the top, bottom, left or right of this uh, tracking marker here. So I want to take the uh, the data from the top, so I'm going to move this layer down just a little bit until, until this tracking marker is off. And if we play that, we can see that it looks pretty good. That's where it should be. We can't really see it anymore. But sometimes the uh, we need to keyframe the position because it can creep back up. So if we just turn this layer off, we can see it's there. That's a, that's staying pretty good. That's pretty good, and that's pretty good. And what we can also do, just to clean it up just a little bit, is add a slight fast blur to the actual shape layer. Might add maybe a one or two.
pixel blur and just make sure that that's still looking okay. That's fine. Also, um, the uh, the the uh, sorry, the luminance can sometimes get um, because you're sampling data from different areas of the image. The luminance can sometimes not match. So, if we, I think it's pretty good here. But uh, for lots of these tracking markers, I definitely had to keyframe a levels adjustment on it um, to make sure the levels matched up. So I just keyframe the histogram and and change the, the luminance values but it's actually pretty good here we won't need to worry about that so that's the process for getting rid of one of these tracking markers and I think I can't remember how many there were but it's like 50 or 60 of these on my face it might not be that high but there was a lot and so I'm just gonna show you that in uber fast forward I think it's like 10,000 percent and you can enjoy that Five hours of uh, cleaning later, we have the finished result, and I think it looks really good. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope to be seeing some Rorschach visual effects tests by the ATUTS users on uh, YouTube. So send me a link. Thanks for watching.